we are just excited, delighted that you are part of this study on today. We continue our series of lessons on the Holy Spirit, and we just pray that this lesson will be beneficial, be a blessing to your life on today. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we love you, we thank you, we magnify, we adore you. We ask your blessings upon the study in which we will engage on today. We pray that it will be beneficial to us. We pray that it will strengthen us, connect us closer to you as we seek to know more about your spirit and his work within this world and his work within our lives. We just pray that you will continue to keep us safe, keep us strong, keep us healthy during these challenging times, and most of all, keep us focused on you. In Jesus' name, amen. We are, uh, again, continuing our study on the Holy Spirit, and we'll be looking at the Spirit in the disciples on today. The Spirit in the disciples uh, will be our focus for uh, today's lesson. We'll start off in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 6 through 20. Matthew chapter 10, verses 6 through 20. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, be as shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. So Jesus has uh, commissioned his disciples and he's sending them out into the world. He's called them, he's sending them. And he says, be as wise, be as shrewd as serpents, be as innocent as doves. Then he says in verse number 17, but beware of men for they will hand you over to the courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for it will be given you in that hour what you are to say for it is not you who speak but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you and so jesus here lets his disciples know that there will come a time when uh, they will be handed over they'll be arrested they'll be in the presence of kings who will be witnesses of the gospel. And he says both to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And so the commission that uh, he has in mind here is greater than the limited commission just to the household of Israel. He's uh, really talking uh, in, in part about the work that they will be doing after he leaves the earth. Uh, we know that they stood before governors and kings and were able to testify uh, concerning the gospel of Christ. And we see examples of this in the book of Acts. Uh, but notice what Jesus says here. He says that uh, you don't have to worry about how you're going to respond for the spirit of your father uh, will speak in you. It's not you who speak, but the spirit of your father. So the spirit serves an equipping function in the life of the disciples. The Spirit prepares them. The Spirit uh, goes ahead of them. Uh, he is one who will provide a response for the disciples in the face of persecution. And so he will guide the disciples in what they should say when they face difficult times they won't have to come up with the words. The Spirit of the Lord will give them the words to say. And I believe that the Spirit still speaks to us today, still gives us the words to say in the face of difficult situations. The Spirit uh, equips us to be able to respond to the hard moments, the difficult questions that may come our way. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to fret because we possess the Spirit of God, and God's Spirit will provide for us an answer, an, an aptly fitting word in any season. And what a blessing it is to be 
a follower of Christ and a possessor of the spirit. Uh, we see uh, now in John chapter 14, more about the spirit. Uh, notice what Jesus says here. I will ask the father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Uh, several things to note about the spirit here uh, in John. Jesus is saying, I'm going to send you a helper. Uh, what is a helper? A helper is one called alongside who helps by consoling, encouraging, or mediating on behalf of someone else. So a helper uh, comes alongside and a helper's role is to help. Uh, but how does a helper help? Uh, he really helps to uh, provide what is lacking, provide what is missing in the life of the child of God. If you stand in need of encouragement, the helper is there. If you stand in need of consoling, the helper is there. If you need someone to intervene and intercede for you, to mediate on your behalf, the helper is there. Jesus says, I'm going to uh, ask the Father and he will give you, he will send you a helper and this helper will be with you forever. Uh, the helper will be with you forever. But there's a, a word that Jesus says here before he says helper. He says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Uh, he'll give you another helper. Uh, if the Father is going to send the disciples another helper, it suggests that they have a helper. And that helper, of course, was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ called them and he was the one who would encourage them and console them and come alongside them, mediate on their behalf. But he says, I'm going to send you another helper. That, that, that word another there in the Greek is not the word heteros or from uh, that, that prefix, we get our word heterosexual, uh, re heteros referring to another of a different kind. Uh, another of a different kind. That, that's not the word that Jesus used here. The word is allos, another of a similar or identical kind, identical essence. Jesus says something very powerful here when he talks about the Father giving the Spirit another helper. Uh, Jesus is, in, in essence, saying that when I depart, I will send another in my place who is almost identical to me. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Jesus says that you've been with me, you've walked with me, you've learned from me, you've seen what I can do. I've been a source of comfort for you, but I'm, I have to leave. But when I leave, I'm going to send another helper but that helper will not be a downgrade. He will be of the same quality, the same characteristics as me, because he too is God. Uh, the one whom the Lord Jesus would send is indeed almost identical to him. Uh, there's really uh, one main difference between the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and that difference is this. Uh, the Lord Jesus ministered from without, while the Holy Spirit ministers from within. Uh, the Lord Jesus uh, lets us know that the Spirit would not be seen. Uh, he says there in the verse that the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but this Spirit will be known uh, by the disciples because he abides with you, but not just with you, but in you. And so uh, this replacement spirit would minister as Jesus ministered to us. Uh, 
uh, although Jesus walked beside his disciples, the Holy Spirit would dwell within the disciples. Uh, he is the spirit of truth is what Jesus calls him. So one of the reasons that the world cannot receive him is because the world does not embrace the truth of God. And so we have another helper of identical nature, the same kind of helper as Jesus Christ possessing power from God. Then later in John chapter 14, this is a great uh, chapter, John's, John chapters 14, 15, and 16 all uh, have teachings on this spirit, this helper who would come. Some translations refer to the helper as the comforter, uh, but helper is a better term uh, because the spirit's function is not just to comfort, but he, his function is to help us more broadly than just specifically uh, this function of comfort. But John chapter 14, verses 25 and 26, these things I've spoken to you while abiding with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all I said to you. So we see here another function of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says to his disciples, the Father is going to send the Spirit in my name and the Spirit will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all I said to you. So part of the teaching function of the Spirit would be to help the disciples remember the things that Jesus said. And this is one of the reasons we can have confidence in the writings of the gospel, because the gospels were either written by disciples or by the disciples of the disciples. And uh, the disciples would have had the spirit to help them remember what Jesus said, what happened, what he did, the things that he taught them. And those uh, of disciples of disciples would have also had the benefit of hearing the disciples share the accounts of the life of Jesus. So Jesus says this helper, and here he calls him the Holy Spirit. So it's called him the spirit of truth. Now he says the helper is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all I've said to you. Now, let's look at John 15. John 15, verses 26 and 27. John 15, 26 and 27. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me, and you will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. So the helper will speak of the things of Christ, the things uh, in terms of the identity and nature, character of Christ, the divine nature of the Messiah, the spirit would testify. He's the helper. Uh, here he's described again as the spirit of truth. So part of his function is to reveal truth and remind us of truth. He reveals truth and he reminds us of truth. And we'll see that the truth that he reveals is the truth that has already been declared. And Jesus says to the disciples, you will testify of me because you've been with me from the beginning. So the spirit will empower their testimony of Jesus Christ. And now in John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. Jesus, in his parting words to his disciples, says, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. 
he will glorify me for he will take of mine and I will disclose it to you. All things that the father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Uh, verse 14, he will glorify me for he will take of mine and disclose it to you. Uh, and so here we see that the spirit has nothing to reveal, uh, has nothing to say, but what Jesus taught. Uh, that is what the spirit will reveal, what the spirit will teach. Jesus says, there's some more I want to say to you, but you can't handle it. But the spirit of truth is going to guide you into truth. Those things that I would have said to you, the spirit will reveal them to you. He won't speak of his own initiative, but he will speak what he has heard from me, and he will disclose to you what he has heard from me. That's one of the reasons why there are times when uh, we look in the book of Acts that uh, there's a, a saying of Jesus that we don't see in the Gospels. Uh, in Acts chapter uh, 20, uh, round uh, verse 35, uh, Jesus says that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Uh, that's what uh, the text reveals to us there in Acts chapter, chapter 20. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And uh, the uh, apostle is clear on who says it. He said the Lord taught it. Well, when did he teach it? It's not uh, shared in the gospels. When did Jesus say such a thing that is more blessed to give than to receive. Well, uh, it was one of those statements that's not recorded in the Gospels, but the Holy Spirit helped bring it to memory uh, as the inspired writers of the Word of God were writing the book of Acts. Uh, and, and as Luke was writing Acts, the Spirit had revealed this saying of Jesus. So Jesus says, there are more things that uh, I want to say to you, but you can't bear it. The hour was uh, too heavy for them to bear it. They would not have remembered it. The, the trauma of the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus uh, would, uh, as it seems to have weighed heavily on them, and they would not have been able to handle more than what Jesus gave them. And so he says, I'm going to send you the spirit, but what the spirit will reveal will be what Jesus taught. The purpose of the spirit is to glorify Christ, not to glorify himself. He's not to glorify a messenger. He's not to glorify an experience. Everything the spirit has is received from Christ. And so we don't glory in the Holy Ghost we glory in Christ. And so the spirit is our helper. Uh, he is not the star of the show, however. Jesus Christ is the one who was crucified and the one that the father has glorified. And so while we are studying on the Holy Spirit and we want to understand the purpose and the role of the spirit in our lives, the, the spirit is part of God's supporting cast as we seek to glorify Jesus Christ in our lives. He's the spirit of truth. He is the Holy Spirit who comes from the Father and he reveals what he has heard. Uh, so that lets us know that if you hear someone saying the Holy Ghost told them or the Holy Spirit told them and it contradicts what Christ has spoken, what has been revealed in the word of God, you know that that person is not speaking in the power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will reveal only what has been disclosed by the Son. What he hears that the Spirit speaks. Reflect on 
this lesson. Uh, you may have to go back and listen to some portions of it again as we have given you an overview of what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit and his role in our lives. May God bless you in your time in prayer, and we look forward to being able to see you again real soon.